Yo, what's going on YouTube? Today, we're gonna to be talking about how we're gonna get you that CS internship you've been looking for. So what I wanna cover with you guys today is just four simple things. We're gonna cover projects in your portfolio, we're gonna cover hackathons, and we're gonna cover actually applying to the jobs, duh. And then we're gonna cover basically just interview prep and getting ready for those jobs when you do get hit up by those recruiters after you do apply. So let's get into it. There's this weird stigma about CS internships in this industry and they think that you either gotta to go to a really good school or you have to have really good resume, or you have to have uh, some people that you know in the industry to get an internship, and that's just not true. You can actually get internships as a freshman, and people aren't really taking advantage of this, and you know that really buffs your resume, and it's gonna help you get those jobs you're looking for later on down the road. I actually used all of these things that I'm covering today to get an internship as a freshman, and CS internships are crazy. They pay really well, and most of the time they pay for your housing too and it gives you so much experience and that's what the bigger companies that you're really aiming for, I'm supposing, are looking for on your resume. They need you to have prior experience, so you need to go for these smaller internships and the best time to do that is as a freshman or really as a sophomore, that's fine too. And then I just really wanna to touch on real quick, something I'm not going to cover in this video is resumes. I'm gonna have an entire video on building a CS resume because there's not a lot of stuff online and I had trouble and I struggled making one until I got tips from my friends on how to actually build out a CS resume and make it look good. So I'll be covering an entire video on that topic. All right, so let's start off with your projects. Projects are huge because honestly, if you don't have any projects to show, especially as a freshman, how are they gonna know you can actually develop and code? You're not gonna get those internships as a freshman without any projects to show and without any proof of actual skill and knowledge in the programming industry. There are so many places online that you can actually keep your projects and you can just link your recruiters or put a link on your resume for recruiters to go and see those projects that you've made. And I know a lot of people also have their own personal websites and they have their all their portfolio and their resume on their own websites. But a really good place to hold all those projects though without building your own website is GitHub. And GitHub is an open source website, basically that uses version control Git and you can put your entire repository or project up online. And yes, people can see your code. You can make it private, but most of the time you wanna have those open because you wanna show recruiters your code and not just the projects you've made. So GitHub is really cool guys. After you do make an account, you can go over to your profile and you can actually see all of the stuff that someone has done and you can look up other people's works too, but you can have repositories and it shows all of the code that you've actually written. And you can just go on there and see line for line the code that you've written and recruiters can look at that too and that can really prove that you do know what you're doing and it's not just copy and paste pasta code, which I guess you could do, but when you get the job, you might be in some trouble. But like I said, GitHub is such a great place and companies like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, they have open source projects on GitHub that you can contribute to. And that's another huge thing in the industry. A lot of these bigger companies are looking for contributions that you have made to the open source community. So if companies are asking for help on these repositories, even simple things, you can go and you can just add to those projects and you can help them out with that stuff. And that actually shows on your GitHub when you do help out with open source projects, it'll show that you contributed to other projects. And that's huge guys. That's honestly a really big thing that companies are looking for. Projects and open source contributions are gonna be one of your strongest points on your resume, regardless of what other people say, trust me. And on the topic of projects, that leads me over to hackathons. And if you don't know what a hackathon is, usually it is a 36 hour competition where you get with a team or you can code by yourself and you guys make a project from scratch and you showcase it at that hackathon. Hackathons are really big too because like projects being really important, teamwork is also really important and being able to work on a team with multiple developers is obviously something you're going to be doing in the workforce. So being able to have that skill of teamwork is huge. So if you can win some prizes at hackathons and they give out good money and there's big companies there that are looking to you know hire and recruit people, that's what it's for. Hackathons are basically recruiting events. But if you can get together with teams and win these projects, you're looking at some big money and you're looking at good jobs. That is actually how I got my first internship. I just went to a bunch of hackathons and I won a bunch of prizes. And eventually it led me to one of the companies asking for my resume. I gave it over to them, had an interview and boom, just like that, it's that easy. Obviously, it's, I mean, it's kind of easy, but you gotta know how to program. <laughs> and there is actually a website that shows all of North America's hackathon schedule. And the company that runs this is Major League Hacking. Basically any big university has these hackathons 
and they are free too. That's the coolest part. They give away free food. All these big companies give away free swag, free t-shirts, free hats, free bags, free pillows. Honestly, name it. They give away so many stickers. And a huge thing too is you do have to apply to these, but most of the time you get accepted. They give away free food. They feed you the entire 36 hours. You go there, all you have to do is code. You don't have to pay for anything. Everything is taken care of. And you can win money. I don't know why more people don't go to these. This is the schedule for the 2019 MLH season. And it's actually not just North America. There is a lot of stuff a lot closer. So some in Mexico, some in Canada. I know I've seen some in Europe, but not really that many. But basically every big university does host a hackathon. So you can really find one almost every weekend. So going to at least one is going to be so big and I guarantee you'll fall in love with hackathons. Going to my first hackathon, guys, it was really nerve wracking. I didn't know what to expect at all. I didn't know, you know, what my team was going to be like. I didn't know how to even work as a team. And stepping out of my comfort zone, guys, really helped me gain confidence to be a better developer. And gaining those skills and working on a team for the first time, it's fun, guys. It's a lot of fun, trust me. And we actually did end up winning a couple prizes our first hackathon, so that was obviously made me fall in love with it too. And hackathons are not just for freshmen, guys. I am going to be attending a hackathon literally next weekend. So they're still fun and they do, regardless of your skill level, you're always gonna gain something from it because you can always challenge yourself and you only really have 36 hours to put together a project. So it is gonna be hacky and it's not gonna be your best code, but it's definitely worth trying and at least putting something out there because instead of just putting it off and always saying you're gonna build something, you're forced to build something in that 36 hours and it's an awesome thing to see going from scratch to a finished, finished product in 36 hours and maybe winning money for it. Who's willing to pay you for bad code? That's huge. That's honestly such a big thing. Oh, I can't get over that. All right, guys, and after you've had all those projects, you have open source contributions, you've gone to hackathons, you've won prizes. Hopefully you've talked to some companies by now, but if not, not really a need to worry because the next step, what we're gonna do is actually go and apply to these companies. Now that you've actually made a resume, you buffed it out, you have things to actually put on there. Now it's time to shine, you've done the work. It's actually a lot easier to apply to these jobs than you think. There's so many websites online that host these job applications that it's almost like a three button click apply. You just have to have your resume handy. You go onto these websites, you click apply on these jobs that they're asking for and go ahead. So literally, I'm just searching software engineering internships. Let's just see what comes up. So right now I am in Michigan, so there's not gonna be a lot of, there's good companies, but there's not gonna be a lot of those Facebook, all those type of companies you're looking for. But those aren't the companies you're gonna be applying if you haven't had any prior experience. You wanna be applying to these smaller companies and actually getting some experience first before stepping up and competing with the big dogs. So you literally can just click on one and click apply and it's usually gonna take you to a third party website. And it's gonna have a lot of your responsibilities, your qualification and requirements. Most of the time guys, these qualification requirements are gonna be so buffed and it's gonna seem like, oh, I don't have all of those, I can't apply. That's not true, just throw your resume out there anyways. Most of the time, the person that writes these doesn't actually even program. So they really don't even know what they're talking about and the recruitment team that does actually program is gonna be looking at your resume anyways. So. Not a big deal. Don't get scared if you don't meet all the requirements. Just apply anyways. What's the worst that's gonna happen? They're gonna say no or not respond to you? Put yourself out there. I know it's scary, but it's definitely worth it if you're looking for this money and these experiences and these CS internships. I just want you guys to know that I know these experiences are scary. And I had to do this all on my own. No one was really there to hold my hand. And I really do just wanna help you guys out and get you through these steps get you a good job, get you those CS internships he's always wanted to do, but you didn't really know how to step forward and actually take action on getting closer to your goals. And now after we've applied, we've buffed our resume, we've gotten our skills up, we've worked with other developers at hackathons, made projects, contributed to open source. You finally get that email and it says, we'd love to interview you. Now you're sweating. <laughs> Don't know what to do. You haven't prepared for this, you're gonna be your first interview. Don't worry about it, it's really not that big of a deal. I just want you guys to know, if you fail, there's thousands of other companies out there that are looking for developers, even inexperienced developers. So just keep trying until you get that job. But once that email does come, and they do want you to interview with them, 
there's a couple things that's going to happen. One, they're either some companies, depending on how big they are, are just going to look at your projects and take a shot with you and you're not going to have to do the dreaded coding interview. Other companies, you are going to have to do this interview. And I just want you guys to be prepared for that. And I have interviewed at Facebook after doing all of these steps that I've done. I got that freshman internship. I was a sophomore and I interviewed at Facebook. Unfortunately, I didn't get the job. I just didn't perform well. I didn't actually prepare well enough. And I just want you guys to be prepared because I don't want that to happen to you. But if it does, not a big deal. You can try again. You can always reapply. The best place, in my opinion, to actually prepare for these internships is LeetCode. And LeetCode is going to be the algorithms website where these companies, these are the type of questions these companies are going to ask you. I'm not going to dive too in depth into these topics and these algorithms. I'm going to do a bunch of videos on them, really helping you guys get ready for those interviews. But basically, if you just head over to LeetCode, there's problems, easy, medium, hard, and there's acceptance rates. And basically, you just click one of them and there's going to be requirements on the side and you're going to have to code that. So there's going to be all the requirements. There's going to be what the inputs are and they're going to be what they want your outputs to be based on the requirements. And you just write that algorithm and give it a go. Don't be too hard on yourself because these are pretty hard at first. Getting your head and wrapping your head around coding like this is a lot different than actually making projects. But the more practice you get, the better you will get. And I promise you that just don't lose steam. Keep on pushing. You'll get there. All right, guys. So we talked about projects and contributing. We talked about hackathons. We went over actually going out there and applying to jobs. And we went over once you do get that interview, we went over actually preparing for the interview. We didn't go too in depth into all these topics, but these are just a general overview of the steps you're gonna take that will actually land you the internships you're looking for. And guys, if you are in high school right now watching this, you can do the same thing. You can actually get internships at your senior year of high school. Companies will hire you for that. And that'll buff your resume even more and get you a closer shot at getting one of those big four company jobs really young. And that will just put you way ahead of the pack if you keep on developing all four of those years at a big company. All right, guys. So I really do appreciate you watching this video. If any of these things did help, please smash that like button, guys, and subscribe to never miss any more of my content. Peace out.